What is up guys, the Strong Boys 19 here. This is going to be another album review for a 2021 album, and I am going to be reviewing the latest studio album from the band Deaf Heaven, entitled Infinite Granite. Now this is their latest output of their albums in their whole discography, follow up to their last album, of Ordinary Corrupt Human Love in 2018. For those that have been very much alike and familiar with some of their earlier output of albums, Deaf Heaven had been releasing and making music mostly onto the mixtures from post-metal to black metal, as some people called them the Black Gaze sounding band. And I am one of these people that absolutely was digging a lot of what this band was going into. And if you are actually expecting to hear the differences that are really minimal and expecting more onto that combination of black metal with that bit of atmosphere thrown on top of it, like the albums like the critically acclaimed Sunbather and one of my favorites being New Bermuda, for example, you are not going to get any of that whatsoever with this album. This album is easily the most diverse and very different album than what they've done previously. And if you are as open-minded like myself, be all here and get ready to hear something really, really atmospheric, but something in a switchable and a variety mark of identity with this album. This album is incredibly inspired, at least into my opinion, with more or less onto one of my favourite music genres of all time in music, which is shoegaze. And I love various bands involving household names with the shoegaze scene, from bands like Slow Dive to Ride, and my personal favourite and most acclaimed band in shoegaze of My Bloody Valentine. But I absolutely think that with this album, after experiencing it, this was absolutely, to me, worth of the anticipation. Because I was really thinking to myself, with the look of the artwork and not hearing any of the new tracks before the album's release, I was maybe expecting something very changeable, and that's what I and all of us really got with this album. So if you really want to get into this album with an open mind, like I've said, then do prepare yourself into, I think, one of their most adventurous and excellent works of arrangements, musical abilities and production with the record all on its entirety at almost an hour length. The first track on the record, Shell Star, a very quiet, atmospheric, ambient introduction with the keyboards and clean guitars that were completely all here with driving, drumming patterns. This is a sound of some gentle vocals that I really like and I like the mood that it brings in some more texture as the music went along, with an incredible combination of some distorted wall of sound type of guitars that comes blaring out on the chorus. And it reminds me on the My Bloody Valentine, Kevin Shales inspired sound, which blends in alongside of the main structure. It's a mellow yet dramatic direction all over the music. And the second track of In Blur, which is an incredible track, and I have loved Shell Star. In Blur opens on very delayed, clean driven guitars, and that remains so consistent throughout this album's entirety. And it actually, weirdly enough, reminds me, verse wise, on the simplicity of I'm on Fire by Bruce Springsteen, which is really, really different to to hear something from this type of band to a solo artist track. At the same time, it's very diverse with the drumming patterns and the reverb that was drenching 
all over with the whole melody and various multi-tracked chords with a reminiscence on a slow dive type of match and direction. Great Mass of Colour. This is a song with very much a deeper mood of lyrical and musical paths with some really sweet arrangements on various volume mixes and frequencies and I think that the vocals sounded calm which matches the whole diversity while the, the head voice on the vocal notes and main vocal performances sounded excellent the music was in a relaxed and to me a wandering way while the effects work alongside with the whole meaning of the song. Then we go into the only instrumental path on the record of Neptune Raining Diamonds. This is a synth directly inspired made instrumental which made me wonder on a bit of like the German greats on the electronic ambience scene like Klaus Schulze or Tangerine Dream. It sounds warm and the droning chords make a wonderful cinematic fruition. Lament of Wasps, the melody was gorgeous on this one and I like how direct the sound of the bass was and it makes it such a consistent brilliant tone with the guitars. The vocals and the verse sections made me think on a bit of weirdly a bit of like a stone roses combination vocally with a bit of like a ride type of sound at the same time as well and i think that this is well performed and a brilliant number which is one of the highlights on the album and not to mention also the guitar tone with its solo was wonderful and hearing the double bass pedaling at the finalizing mark of the instrumentation. We hear some more onto the simplicity and the melody on the song Villain and I really like the vocal interplay on the diverse vocal tones and its pacing was so soft as it was going along and I think that it has a bit of the uni vibe ish type of sound from the guitars and the padded ambient keyboard sound comes in after the first half and then the track was building up so much wider expression driven sounds. You hear the wicked screams as they sounded excellent without making it different into something heavier but this is a well balanced combination. The Gnashing is a song which brings in a bit of that uh, heavier edge to it, distorted blazing chords and this type of minor sound was to me at a bit of an intense fulfillment and I really am digging just the whole mixture from these howling guitar noises backing up the music entirely and the main cleans of the singing which doesn't make it uh, really switchable or going back to what they've done previously on the uh, earlier albums. Other Language, in my opinion, is my main least favourite number on the record. While I have been really absorbing and digging in so much of these colourful and very melodic arrangements on vocals and music, Other Language is to me a bit of like the the poppy-ish kind of vein, not to mention that um, there is a bit of that on most of the tracks here, but I have been thinking about just the alternative shoegazy mixture on most of the tracks here, but Other Language still adds in some very, very good performances, and I prefer the earlier tracks that were more of the connection and the memorable stuff like on Shell Star and In Blur and Lament of Wasps. The finale track of Mombasa. This opens with the sound of beach waves and a bit of like a field recording kind of intro and then the acoustic guitars was beginning the whole sound and some more delayed guitar effects so innocent and touching I was well impressed with the slower yet swimming sound this song was and it has some musical layers that were sweetly connected and delicate. Colourful synthesizer sounds backing away from the whole direction of the 
guitarist and variety on the drumming vocal sound that reminds me on that slow dive vein as the finalizing part of the song comes in the louder menacing screams after the explosion of the heavy black metal sound comes in which was so placed in very very well and with most of the track that was just full of atmosphere all the way through I really like that they decide to build everything immediately after the main clean parts of the track then they just go in this ballistic mark of territory to finalize the whole album and to me that was just a really great closer the production on the record was just phenomenal everything onto the mixing the tonality of this thing was just out of this world it was just as excellent and to me they were one of the bands that have not made an album with subpar production because i really like that this is one of those bands where they can just make something big and with a massive sound and i have to say that the vocals from george were at one of his very best with his own fruition and syncopation alongside kerry and Shiv's guitars. I really like the melodious and melodic arrangements onto the way that they were building in so much craft and also with the diversity from Daniel's drumming. He was just such a spectacular drummer to hear the variety and the full completion with his fills and beats. Brilliant drumming and as well with Chris's bass work which was just so, so good to hear such a rich and prominent, brilliant bass tone to match in with the rest of the instrumentation. An awesome album from, I think, one of the best modern bands. And if you really want to dive into this with a difference of direction, and the continuation of where this band is really going to go to, then I highly advise you to absolutely crank this album and be in a bit of the uh, atmospheric and ambient driven yet really soft, gorgeous tinged uh, musical surprises with this record. Let me know what you think of this album in the comments down below. A 9 out of 10. This album, the more I come back to this over time and the more I think about the songs and the moodiness and the melodies and just the whole, the whole massive connection that I had with this album, this was definitely going to be included into one of my favourite records of the year. As I've said earlier on, I highly would absolutely recommend this. Thank you guys for watching. And as always, I will keep you guys posted for more videos in the near future.